Wow. Thank you all so much. Hey, let me ask you a question. Have you ever reached for a goal and failed? Yes. Yeah. Maybe it was a, a, a business goal. Maybe it was a financial goal of some sorts. Maybe a weight loss goal or maybe a marital goal. But whatever it was, you're really pumped up. You're really going to do it this time. But over time, the passion faded and life seemed to get in the way. And you didn't reach that goal again. If that's ever happened to you, you might be interested in this parable. It's called The Farmer and the Ox Cart. There once was a farmer that lived on very fertile land, but he had no way to get his crops to the market just across the river. Well, why don't you build a bridge? The village elder asked him. Build a, I'm a farmer. I don't know how to build a bridge. Ask the carpenter. He knows how to build many things. And sure enough, the farmer learned from the carpenter how to build a bridge. So he had his bridge, but he had no way to pull his cart full of vegetables across the bridge to the market. So he bought an ox from the village elder. It was a good ox, a strong ox. But when he brought it home and attached it to his cart, the ox refused to pull it anywhere. This ox is no good, he said to the elder. I want my money back. How did you motivate him? Motivate him? He's an ox. He should, he should know what to do and do it. Do you always do what you're supposed to do, or do you need to be motivated sometimes yourself? Find out what the ox likes and reward him when he does right. Well, the farmer knew that the ox's favorite treat was carrots, sweet and juicy. So he dangled a carrot just in front of the ox's head. When he moved forward to get it, he pulled the cart behind him. And that worked great, as long as the ox was hungry. <laughs> when he wasn't, it didn't work at all. Angry again, the farmer approaches the elder. What am I supposed to do when the carrot doesn't do the trick? Sit beside the road till he's hungry enough? This just won't do. What do you do when you don't feel like working, but know you need to? Well, I think of how my crops will rot in the field. My family will starve. That gets me out of bed no matter how tired I am. Okay. What is it that the ox doesn't like? Well, he hates for anything to touch his tail. My son grabbed it one day and nearly paid the price. Okay, the next time the carrot doesn't do the trick, try tapping his tail with a stick. Well, that worked so well. Usually, just showing the ox the stick was enough to get him going. Boy, that farmer was sure proud of that shrewd purchase he'd made. That's the best ox I ever had. Sometimes the carrot worked. Sometimes the stick worked. But using them together, he always got his crops to the market. So let me ask you, what does this have to do with you and I reaching our goals? Well, let me tell you how the concept of it made a profound impact on my life. This is a picture of me in my daddy's arms. Aww. And my dad was an amazing man. He grew up a poor sharecropper in South Dakota. But he got a job in literally the poorest city in the entire United States of America. A small Texas-Mexico border town by the name of McAllen, where I grew up. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my hometown, but it could be a little rough growing up there sometimes with the gangs and the drugs. In fact, this little baby, me, just a few years after this picture was taken, was staring down the barrel of a gun in my own back alley in middle school. In high school, my father, my dad, was killed. Before he died, one of the neighbors came up to him and said, I just want to make sure you understand something. Those three boys of yours, your three sons, not a single one of them will ever grow up to be anything. See, that's where I come from. That's my background. And I tried to prove them wrong. In fact, I even started a business, and guess what? I was terrible. I was horrible. <laughs> I don't know how to run a business. So just like the farmer went to the carpenter, I found somebody to help me build my bridge, to teach me how to do a business. But here's the problem. Having a goal and sticking to it over the long run are two totally different things, aren't they? Yeah. There always seems to be this missing piece of the puzzle to push you forward when times get tough. So I learned everything I could about self-improvement, man. I did all the books and the audio tapes and the seminars, and I learned about positive visualization and manifestation and writing down your goals, but there was always that missing piece of the puzzle. And I tried, and I failed, and I tried, and I tried, and I failed. I 
I just didn't have it in me to fail anymore. And I walked into the bathroom and I looked myself in the mirror. So he's right. You're never going to grow up to be anything. And I, wait a minute. No, no, I refuse to let that happen. For the, for the memory of my father, if nothing else, I refuse to let that son of gun be right. And something happened. A fire lit up inside of me. And I got up and I brushed myself off. And I got back at it. Now I still hit the same setbacks and disappointments as before. But now I had that missing piece of the puzzle. Not just a carrot. Something to move forward. Some positive visualization that I never believed would happen to a guy like me. But now I had the power of the stick. Something to push me forward when the carrot didn't do the trick. And the power of both of them was amazing. What I didn't realize is just a few years before that, there was a gentleman by the name of Daniel Kahneman who came up with something called prospect theory. In so doing, he proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that oftentimes a negatively framed message can be more powerful than a positively framed message. And when he applied this to economics, he won the Nobel Prize. So I applied it to goal setting. I came up with something I called the ox cart technique based on that parable. And it was simple. It was easy. It was just three pieces of paper. That's all it was. But it was so powerful because that first piece of the paper was that missing piece of the puzzle, the stick. What would it be like if I didn't reach my goal? I call it my failure scenario. Now, oh, these days in culture, we can't think about failure. Yes, we can. It can be powerful if we do it right. In my case, never grow up to be anything. I embraced it. I wrote that down on my piece of paper, my failure scenario. I put that up on the wall, and I read it out loud twice a day, every day, and it fired me up. I'd read that. There's no way in the world. I'm gonna, I will do anything to make sure that doesn't happen. And what is anything? That second piece of the paper, my bridge from failure to success, my daily actions I will take to make sure my failure scenario never comes true and my success scenario does. How amazing it will be when I reach my goal. And that business that I started, I failed. I quit. I couldn't do it. He's right. I ended up becoming part of the top 1% of my entire industry in the world. Thank you. So people ask me, Terry, what are you doing? So I taught them the technique. Before I knew it, I had rooms full of people coming to listen to me and learn from me. And we started applying it to marriage because marriage is a goal, or at least it should be. I started getting these emails, you just saved my marriage. And one of my audiences was this international weight loss coach, and she started teaching it to her clients around the globe. And then something happened, a guy like me could never even imagine. The word got out, and some of the top names in the world, in science and business and self-improvement, endorsed something from me. The guy's never going to grow up to be anything. You can clap for that. I bet you can. <laughs> and then something terrible happened. I caught one of my own employees rifling through my drawers looking for my leftover prescription painkillers. And she was busted. She knew she was in trouble. And through tear-filled eyes, she told me her story. Twelve years ago, she was in an accident. Twelve years ago, she got addicted to pain meds. Not even her husband knows. And for twelve years, she's tried and failed and tried and failed. And I knew I had to help her. Not enable her, but help her. So I gave her her failure scenario. You're going to prison this is a felony. You're stealing my prescription pain medication. You're going to prison. And I let that sink in just for a moment. And then I gave her her bridge from failure to success, her action plan, unless you go to inpatient counseling and follow it up with outpatient counseling. And I will follow up and make sure you stick to this because when you do success scenario, you can be free. You can stop lying to your husband. You can stop lying to your friends and family. You can stop lying to yourself. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm ecstatic to say that as of this day, she's still clean. So 
So have you ever reached for a goal and failed? Maybe it was a business goal, a financial goal of some sort, or maybe it was a weight loss goal, or maybe a marital goal, or maybe something else. But whatever it is, next time, give the ox cart technique a try. Sometimes the carrot will work. Sometimes the stick will work. But if you use them both together, you'll always get your crops to the market, whatever they may be. Thank you. Yeah.